In this quick tip, we're going to explore the five basic tool sets that you use when you're creating appearances in Affinity Designer. First way is with the fill tool. And there's three types of fills that the fill tool does. A solid color, different types of gradients. In this case, I'm just going to use an ellipse one. Change the color stops in the color picker. You can move it around, uh, change the rotation. The third type is the bitmap, where you import a black and white or color image into the object. And there's different settings for that. I'm not going to worry about them right now. And then the last two are, um, I'm just going to add it two colors here to show. The top one, we're going to uh, go to the opacity slider in the color field. And then by clicking on the same dot, you get the noise filter. And I've added the styles to my styles palette here just by using the add style from selection with the object selected. And you just see I can cycle through and apply all those five different styles to the same object. Or there's a transparency. The second tool set to use is the appearance palette. The appearance palette lets you apply multiple fills and strokes to one object. In the first object here, I'm going to add a, another fill. We're going to, in the first one, we'll create a bitmap using the um, fill tool. And I have this rust pattern. And I'm going to change the blending mode to, let's say, overlay. And then I'm going to add another fill. And this time I'll use the, the gradient, just a linear gradient and change the colors and also the blending mode of that. All right, for the next one, I'm gonna add some strokes and you can apply uh, different brush strokes to as many strokes as you want overlaying on top. And I'm gonna change the colors here and then select another stroke, change that color. <clears throat> All right, and the third one, you can also use the uh, pressure contour to make a customized stroke profile. That also can be saved as a style. And just again cycling through after I've added them to my styles palette. Third is the contour and also the transparency tools. Uh, the styles can save those as well. So the new contour tool allows you to expand or contract a stroke and um, I'm also using the transparency tool to fade out the object. And we'll save that as a style and apply that to the star shape. You notice that the corners went from pointy to round. The fourth area is the effects menu. You can apply effects by clicking on the effects option at the bottom of the layers palette, or you can go under view, studio, layers to bring up its own dedicated panel. And you can use as many or few of the effects, and when you make a new style, it will save all of those adjustments. One thing I should mention, when you're applying the effects to an object, that effect will impact all the strokes and all of the fills. So you can't just target one fill or one stroke. It's kind of all or nothing. The bonus that I'm going to show you comes from applying a series of effects not to a vector object, but to a pixel object in the pixel persona. So in the pixel persona, I painted with a brush on a pixel layer, and now I'm applying three effects to that layer, Gaussian blur, uh, a outer shadow, and a 3D effect, just to kind of make it obvious what we're doing here. The benefit of making a style from one of these pixel objects is that the style maker will only grab the effect information it will not grab color or stroke because there isn't any available to it. So unlike a vector object, which will preserve all of that, you can now apply a pixel-based style to a vector object and keep any color, stroke, fill, uh, gradients that you've already applied. The effect will just be added on top without overriding the existing appearance. I hope you found this quick tip useful. Give me a thumbs up if you did and consider subscribing. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.